This time on the Hay Farm series. We'll finally tear out that old fence system and start mapping out our path so I can finally now have a crisp, clean path to my straw supplying field. To do that, we're going to look into this skid steer forestry mulcher, lay down some new gravel on the path, and take care of our cows. Let's get into it. So top of the morning to you laddies, my name is the Rental Man Buck. Welcome back to the Hay Farm series on this crisp November morning. We got a few projects for you on the list today, that being the big project of putting a pathway to get to my straw field. Instead of having to take main roads, I'm able to reroute my system through the backyard up by the cattle barn, and then we could just kind of take out the fence system, and make that whole pathway nice and clean. In order to do that project, however, we need to look into a skid steer mounted forestry mulcher. I could probably get one that mounts to the back of the tractor, but it's a difference between $24,000 and $9,300 if I were to go buy a skid steer one. So I'm going to do that, going to use the Bobcat. We will have to go and take care of the cattle this morning, but we can take care of that once we get back. Right now I'm dropping off some supplies at the farmer's market, since that'll get me a little bit of extra funds to work with. And after selling that, my bad, I kind of was working on a little bit of landscape, so I just added in some money and took it back out. But after selling all of our produce, we sold $1,853 worth of product, so that's a nice little buffer zone to help us out with the mulcher. So let's head over to the dealer, and we'll see you guys there. Now jumping into the dealer here, what we're going to be looking at is this 3000 mulcher from Lizard. All it does is it mounts to the uh, skid steer plate on our bobcat and then we'll hook up our hydraulics and the forestry mulchers are always my favorite because you can just drop the forestry mulch to the ground and from grass or whatever it is, it'll tear it up and it'll make it into a dirt texture. So then after that, I'm going to run over with the roller that I have sitting in my main shed and it'll give us a nice little smooth dirt path. And if I really want to get fancy and I might do it just for uh, ground reasons in case it gets muddy, I'm going to throw down some gravel on top of that. But after options, because the color on this is a uh, construction yellow, it's about $10,000. So I'll get the payments done on this. Hopefully we can maybe finance a little bit of it instead of just paying it all outright. But then we'll have this for multiple projects to come. So let's take care of that. Well, I ended up buying the thing completely outright. It just, talking to the bank, it made the most sense because I can also use this to do other projects. Lock it on here quick. Actually, I don't even think I need to lock it just because we're going right over here. I love my new F450. That truck has been fantastic i haven't had any problems with the 67 so far it's been towing really well we'll just set that on the trailer and we'll head back to the farm now if you guys have not already be sure to smash that like button subscribe down below as you guys knew that we are on the race to the hundred thousand subscriber mark by the end of this year being on the hay farm here i do love the projects that we do put together on this series since it is one of my more creative series that i have on the channel and hopefully by the end of this project, we'll have a lot easier access just to get to my straw field since I don't like going through the main roads with my equipment. There's just not a whole lot of like visible things you can see on the tractor compared to like newer stuff. But now that we're rolling back into the property here, uh, actually I'm on the wrong one. So I probably could start up the white because I will be using this for gravel work. Well, you start this up so we can at least move it over here later. It's kind of cold out this morning. Now, Daryl is already up here. He is working with the cattle per usual. And I'm just going to park this right here so we can get it out of the way and start feeding the cattle so we can move on and stay focused on the building of the path. And after noticing that apparently with either a farm sim update or something on this map, I have completely lost all of my bales, and I wondered why it looked vacant over there, because I did not have any of my straw bales. I have no bales anymore, so I had to go and buy a few. But cattle have now been fed and taken care of. Their food is at 100% capacity. I did have to feed them a bit of forage to kind of balance out the cart without completely emptying it out. So total mixed rations versus hay. We're going to have a little bit of a difference in feed, but they do have full food. So may as well just leave this right here, since not really going to do a whole lot with it. 
Now the concept, or at least the idea behind how I want to do this, is I first of all need to go out and take out the fence post. I think the best course of action maybe is to run back to the farm, grab the GMC, we'll throw all the wood in the back of the bed of that truck. I will have to take maybe the bobcat blade or something, and uh, I'm gonna do this in landscape mode, but to kind of like level out this drop off that I have right here is this is probably my best pathway to get to the field and we'll run a path straight down this portion of the hill. But it's a little rough right here so I kind of want to smoothen that out. And then once we get to this river crossing there's a certain spot that I think I have to go through and I believe it's right between these two trees. Yes, if we go right here we can, we'll have to clear out some of these but I'll just probably use this mulcher for that. And boom, we pop right out at the field where we need to be. Saving us time, energy, and money. So let's start by running back to the GMC, and then we can start pulling posts. Here we go. And now that we have the K10 here, all of my scrap wood is going to go into the back, or if I still have good wood that comes from these posts, I might consider reusing them at some point if I need to build new fences, but I'm gonna pop up into landscape here quick and start removing this entire fence line and being as careful as I can so I don't break too many of the boards. We're gonna take out at least up into this gate. If I take up, to, if I take out up into this gate, that'll work because I don't use this as cattle pasture anymore. So this fence line is kind of pointless to a point. So let's jump up in the air. And we'll start getting some posts removed so we can throw them in the back of the truck. There we go. We'll just kind of start working our way down here. Throwing all the boards in the back of the GMC. Scooch up a bit on these so I'm not walking nearly as far. Luckily, the bed on this is long enough that I could fit all the boards in here. If I had like a six and a half foot bed, it might be a little bit tougher because I might have to make a couple trips. But I think I could fit almost all this in one trip. All right, let's just keep removing the posts. And I think I will stop at the gate. That seems like the easiest and the best way to do this. Now I did reset the one post here where the gate was because I didn't want the one end to be like just hanging there at the board. So this post was put in and then this post was just put in the other hole for one of the gates. And then we just applied to the four nicest boards that I had. But I'm gonna take the boards here quick to probably the back shed where I kept the, before they just went, you know, bye-bye for deletion of whatever reason, the back shed where I kept the hay bales as well as the silage bales. With all those fence posts now unloaded beside the shed, let's run over to the white and we'll take that tractor with us over to the work area. And I might actually use this to help me out with the grading of that ground. I'm going to get to work on this little area right here, and I also got to run down to get the bobcat so I can start grinding a path down through the trees. Hardest part about always grading out something is trying to figure out where the best area to put terrain is. I'm going to kind of try and work my way around this area. Just so I can smoothen this out, because I'm pretty sure... I obviously don't want it to be completely like sideways, but I don't want to take away from my fence posts over here so they're not like falling out of the ground. And you know, I think I just found out a way I could use this. I'm actually gonna go grab the roller and I'll do the rolling with this tractor. And the first thing we'll do once we get all this done is I'm gonna mow the sides of the path with the Alice. So that way we can have a nice clean on both sides pathway. We'll detach one and attach the other. And we'll let the good times roll. The good thing that is that I'm getting to this before the ground freezes. I really wouldn't want to do this when the ground starts to become frozen as that would become a whole another ordeal of pain. I think two passes are probably going to be enough for what I'm trying to do. But yeah, this is this is the biggest reason why I love forestry mulchers. Look at what this does. Well, I kind of got to you kind of have to play with it sometimes to really get it to work. But look at that smoothness of a path that it makes. Having an official pathway to get down to this spot is really going to be efficient. And it's also going to keep me on track because half the time I try to go down here, it's like I always cut across this way, but I never know what's the way I'm supposed to go. So now I'll have an actual identifiable path on where I'm supposed to go. I'd say I'm loving this mulcher though so far. It's really getting its job done just the way I wanted it to. 
We will have to probably come in here and cut up these dogwoods. I'm really thinking about that now. Oh, that might not be the dogwood. I think the dogwood's the... Might be like that one or something. I don't know. I just kind of weaved my way through the tree line here. And I don't know... Maybe we'll cut through here and we'll cut down one or two of these trees. Yeah. So here's our field. Raise up our mulcher. We'll kind of find our way going back. And this will give us an idea of which ones we're going to be, which one of these trees we're going to be cutting down versus which ones we could technically leave, but maybe have to trim some branches on. Like, I don't want to get rid of those trees, but I might end up just cutting off the one side. So that way I'm not hitting anything. That or I could just be smart and probably widen out the path so I don't have to do anything. In all fairness, I really could just leave this path to probably be dirt. But I don't want to get, like, stuck going to the field when it gets muddy. Which is why I really think I'm going to end up putting down some sort of gravel. Even if it doesn't look pretty like the stuff out here in the main yard. That'll at least help with getting around the farmyard compared to getting stuck in the field. So the roller is putting this to what would be considered the seed bed. But I just kind of wanted to have something to compact out all of our turned up dirt here. So... The dirt itself kind of made its own nice looking road texture. Another reason why I wanted to put the gravel. But this will help us compact out all that loosened dirt. So we're really not digging in. I'm going to keep rolling away here. We'll go grab the GMC probably. Maybe bring the Ford down here with the load trail. Load up the branches of the trees that we're going to be cutting down. Or the trees that we'll be cutting down in full. And then we can haul those out and start laying some gravel. Just so I have an idea, I'm not cutting the wrong ones. This one, I don't even think I need to mark, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna mark you. Let's mark you. And I don't believe I'll need to mark any other ones. Because the rest of these, I'm just gonna go up and grab the mulcher with, and I'll take them out that way. Let's roll up to our first contestant. On the price is right. Well, that was easy. And we'll clear out these little guys first. I will have to cut the other ones, but these ones I can just kind of drive up to and just chop out without having to worry about too much. There it goes. There it goes. Perfect. That actually landed literally perfect. So I'll kind of start chopping off the little guys here, and these will be the ones that we can throw in the back of the GMC once I bring it back down here. I think I'll cut these other two trees here right now just so they're done and out of the way, and then I can start cleaning up the trees themselves. Oh, no. Okay, good thing I didn't have to worry about that. We'll cut this bad boy here too, and we'll just come in with the forestry mulcher as a stump grinder and clean those up that way. Now, I believe our first tree here has been completely chopped up enough where we can just kind of start loading all of our small twigs by hand. I probably should clean up a lot of the leaves on the ends of these, but hey, I just kind of want to get the job done and get it done uh, quickly just so I'm not standing out here in the freezing cold as it's still only about uh, 38 right now. We got about a 5 to 10 mile an hour wind gust, but our trunk pieces here, I'm just going to kind of drag them over to the middle and I'll pick these up with the with the bucket let's get our bale spikes right underneath of it and what do you know that actually worked really well that was actually surprising but also enlightening there is hope for this game and there is our first trailer load of logs so we're just gonna strap up this monstrosity and Head into town and get these things dumped off quick. Now I'm very lucky because that oak tree actually wasn't very big and it didn't have a whole lot of branches, kind of uh, at least some bigger ones that I would have needed to have hauled. I was just kind of able to chop them up enough and then just throw them in the ditch as sticks. But we'll get the last two main logs here and we'll load them up on the trailer and we should be able to call it good get our stumps grinded and drop some gravel. And by using the forestry mulcher, let's just get rid of our old stumps here. Beautiful. 
Now I know I want to try and do like a really consistent gravel, but I think we'll probably just yeah, I might just do this kind of keep it where it's still a nice good solid gravel, but it's nothing that's Really too fancy Kind of leave it a little bit uh, Narrower so we could still kind of get a little bit of dirt on the sides Just give it a little bit of texture Perfect and I would say that's a pretty good looking path there. I am just gonna maybe give it a little bit of uh Maybe a little bit of texture going up the middle and that'll do it Let's grab our Alice here. Let it warm up for just a hair and we'll get the Rhino unfolded And we're just gonna mow right along the side of this path Probably one of the better purchases I've made. I did end up doing a bit of service work to the Rhino, so put some new blades on it. Reef changed all of the oil inside of the spindle housings. Made sure all of my hydraulic lines were not cracked or bent, spliced, something of that nature. Just kind of an overview full on check. Checked all of my tires, all of my bearings. And everything seems to be in order with that. So overall, I'd say it was a pretty good purchase. Coming up to the field entrance here quick, and then we'll be able to turn around. And just let the good times roll. Play out some of all of this nasty stuff right here. And look at how good that looks. There's at some point I might end up trimming that one branch right there and possibly that branch that hangs up over the top right there But I don't really have that tall of equipment, but I think that's gonna do it for this video guys Thank you so much for checking this one out Be sure to smash that like button subscribe down below if you like little side projects like this being done And you want to see more let me know down in the comments down below but if you haven't already, be sure to check out the Booster Club for all the up-to-date content from me and the gang. You guys already know who is in it. And I shall see you guys all in the next one. This is the Rental Man.